I've actually picked up some really nice fish. They're always rolling the dice when you do deal with cichlids. A lot of people don't have local fish stores. All the aggressive fish. So make sure you do your homework. Look at that one there. Sometimes you can find some gems. They got Oscars. Way too many fish. The bigger, the better. Bully in the tank, battle wall. You see him right there? Aloha, my ohana. It is your boy back in it to win it. Now, if you're new to the channel, let me be the first to give you a nice big warm aloha and welcome. On my channel, we talk about everything aquatics, whether it be freshwater, saltwater, goldfish, koi ponds, product reviews, and DIY projects in the hobby. Now, if you're wondering where I'm at, I'm at none other than PetSmart in Lincoln, California. And before we get started, I gotta give a huge shout out to Shelly, the manager, for allowing me to create this video in her store. So come on down and check them out. I'll have their address and everything down in the description below. Now, the reason why I decided to create this video was because of you. Yeah, the Ohana. I'm gonna give a huge shout out to Thomas Mason. Sorry, I think that's how you pronounce your last name. Anyways, he left this comment right here in one of the previous videos. And I thought, what a great idea. He's basically saying, can you do a video on common mistakes that begin fish keepers make and I thought what a great spot to do this video than my backyard which is Lincoln California here at PetSmart now I know a lot of you guys out there bad mouth the big box stores and I get it but you got to think about it without PetSmart and Petco although I do prefer PetSmart over Petco because I don't know it's like my whole thing Lowe's versus Home Depot I'm a Home Depot guy and a PetSmart guy but you tell me in the comments how many times you've come to PetSmart to get some Prime or just for an emergency tank or something that happens. Trust me, you can't knock PetSmart and Petco. They are a great emergency store. And not only that though, a lot of people don't have local fish stores in their area. They only have the big box stores. So we can't badmouth PetSmart and Petco. They're just doing their thing. But not only that though, I've actually picked up some really nice fish at this PetSmart. Now obviously all PetSmarts aren't the same. I see people get some beautiful rare fish at their PetSmart and I'm like, wait, what? I picked up renovation from here. Yeah, my big Midas cichlid, he was labeled as a red devil but then as he got bigger he actually turned into a Midas cichlid but I got him here from this pet smart I also picked up a Nerei African cichlid super rare to find they had a Nerei here I had one other Nerei and I actually ordered it from a breeder in San Diego that's how rare that fish is so let's go over some common mistakes that are made in the fish hobby this is probably more geared towards the beginner fish keeper but you're gonna learn a lot in this video all right so the first topic we're gonna talk about is buying the right fish now normally when you come to PetSmart they're kind of in order starting from way down there non-aggressive or community fish and then slowly moving down this way to more aggressive semi-aggressive fish so pay attention to the label right here you see this label that says community pond fish which are koi now speaking of koi make sure you understand how big a koi gets and they're normally not made for an aquarium i know people love koi and they want to keep them in an aquarium but that's got to be way momentarily because they get big like i'm talking about two feet big so make sure you do your homework before you actually buy your fish here's a great example guys you got community tropical fish and it says experience level is beginner and then as we move down the green tag will slowly turn into a blue tag it says community but it's a semi-aggressive fish and it says experience level intermediate now as you move down to the far end you're coming across all the aggressive fish now i think they have them labeled as a red tag it says community african cichlid aquarium and it says the experience is advanced so that's just giving you a heads up. As we go over to this aquarium here, it says the same thing, community, South American cichlids, and the experience level is intermediate. Now these are blood parrots. They're a little bit more calm, I would say. I mean, they are cichlids, so you're always rolling the dice when you do deal with cichlids. Now, as we scroll over here, we have a beautiful red devil. Look at that red devil cichlid. Like I said, I got renovation from PetSmart. This is actually what he looked like when I first got renovation. Look at them. You see them right there? Kind of that white with the orange and a little bit of black. That's exactly what renovation looked like when I first got them. They have Severums here. Nice selection. Ooh, look at these. Convict Cichlids. And of course, they got Oscars here. Look at these Oscars. You have the Tiger and you have Albino. Look how beautiful that African Cichlid OB is. You see that? Ooh, check out this one here. 
Look at that one there. Beautiful, right? Like I was saying earlier, sometimes you can find some gems when you come into your local PetSmart. So take a look at the aquariums. I always take a trip down the fish row. Now another common mistake is people buying fish and mixing them together, like grabbing a community fish and mixing it with a super aggressive fish just because they like the colors or the way they look. Take time to get on your smartphone, because everyone has one nowadays, Google search the name of the fish and find out its origin, its parameters, temperature. Not only that though, check out to see how big they get too because a lot of people will buy an Oscar fish not knowing that they grow about eight inches within a year. And next thing you know, you got this huge Oscar in a 20 gallon tank, which is a no-no in the hobby. Now another common mistake that people make are they just see a fish and they buy it. Make sure you look at the health of a fish. You can actually see if the fish are missing fins, if they're swimming a funny way, and if a fish has ick. Now ick is common in the hobby and a lot of fish do carry ick. And ick would be like taking your fish and sprinkling salt all over it. Sometimes you'll see a fish and it looks like it has these little white dots all over it. And that's ick. And I'm not going to go over the details on ick and that disease. Oh, actually, it's a real common disease. Um, I'll let you guys look it up on YouTube. There's so many videos on ick. But just make sure you take time. Be patient. Look at the aquarium fish. Um, you know, you can actually see a lot by just watching the fish swim around. You can see what fish is aggressive. If there's a bully in the tank, you may not want that fish in your aquarium. Simple rule to follow. Just be patient on picking out your fish. Now, another common mistake that people make are buying the right aquarium size for their fish. Now, I'm gonna personally say, the bigger, the better. Go big, all right? Now, I know some people live in apartments. Some people live in places where you can't have a huge 55-gallon tank or maybe not even a 40-gallon breeder. PetSmart has some really good deals on some full sets, meaning the stand, the aquarium, decor, light, heater, filter, everything. An all-in-one setup, which is a bigger aquarium. They have 50-gallon tanks, 45-gallon tanks, 60-gallon aquariums. But be patient. Ask them if there's any sales in the future coming because sometimes you can save up to 50% on a whole setup if you just be patient. Now, another thing that falls under that category is decor for your aquarium. Make sure you get the right decor for your fish. Now, there are fish that prefer to hide in caves to make them feel comfortable and so they feel at home. Give them some hides. If a fish needs some caves, maybe they love rocks. Scape it to where your fish is comfortable. And that falls under the category of looking them up, Google searching on your smartphone. Also, substrate is super important too. And that falls under the category of looking up the fish, seeing what type of substrate they live in. Some of them love sand or prefer sand substrate. Some actually prefer like a gravel. So take a look at that too as well, super important. Now another common mistake is I think a lot of beginner fish keepers get caught up in the marketing side of when they see a box or an aquarium on a box. Now you may see these smaller aquariums here and be like, oh, I can store 20 fish in that aquarium. The fish store did it, but you don't realize that this aquarium is deep and they also don't plan on keeping all these fish in here for their whole life. Like as an example, you might see this tank and go, oh my gosh, this is the same size tank that I have. But you see this divider, it's clear, it's see-through, it's got holes in it. So this 20 gallon tank that you may think is, is actually maybe a 30 or 40 gallon tank. So don't get it twisted, okay? Don't get caught up in the marketing. But here's an example of a killer marketing here. Okay, you got a three and a half gallon tank, which is not much at all. You got a Garami in here, a Corydora. Looks like you got four Neon Tetras or maybe Cardinal Tetras. I'm not sure, I'm looking at it right now. It looks like Cardinal Tetras. Look at the red, it goes all the way back to the fin. And then you also have a sword tail. Way too many fish for a three and a half gallon aquarium. That's my opinion though. So just be careful, don't get caught up in the marketing. Like, oh my gosh, we can get this three and a half gallon tank and I can get seven fish. Right behind me here is the battle wall here at PetSmart. Now, everybody has their own opinion on how many gallons you need to store one betta. And uh, I'm gonna give you guys my opinion. Now, as we leave the betta wall, we come over here to these all-in-one aquariums. Now, Top Fin is like the name brand here at PetSmart. They make a great all-in-one aquarium. You got a one-gallon aquarium, which you have a betta here. It shows you the picture, but I wouldn't recommend a one-gallon aquarium for a betta. I wouldn't recommend a one-gallon aquarium for any fish, maybe a couple snails or something like that. I wouldn't recommend a two gallon aquarium, two and a half, three and a half. I would recommend, this is my opinion, 
a minimum tank size of five gallons, and that's kind of stretching it. I would prefer a 10 gallon tank, but some people don't have the space for a 10 gallon tank. That's why I dropped my standards down to a five gallon tank. You'll be able to have one beta in here living comfortably and you don't have to worry about the water parameters as much. Just do your weekly water changes and you should be fine. It comes with the tank divider if you want one, the hood and feeding door, a bright white LED light, the top fin element filter, and then you have two top fin small element filter cartridges to go in here. With that being said, it does not have a heater and I highly recommend getting a heater for your betta. Bettas are a tropical fish, okay? So don't get it twisted, all right? Oh, bettas don't need anything but a glass jar. I can't stand that when people have them in like vases. They need an aquarium for space to swim around and they also need a heater. All tropical fish need heaters now if you happen to use a 10 gallon aquarium you can do a lot more you can have more fish you can actually add more decor you can make it look really nice so just keep that in mind all right now the biggest no-no of all runs under the lines of being patient and that's the nitrogen cycle don't think that you can come into a store buy a tank buy fish buy substrate and set it all up in one day unless you do a couple things and this is where a lot of beginner fish keepers have a problem. Now, believe it or not, there's a lot of beginner fish keepers that don't realize that their pipe water coming from their house, their hose, their sink, has a lot of chlorine and chloramine in it. And you have to detoxify that. And in order to do that, this is what I use. I use Prime. Now, Prime has been a lifesaver for me. It will dechlorinate the water from chlorine and chloramines. That could kill your fish. Unless you're on a well. Now, if you're running on a well, your entire house, you don't need the chlorinator. But for the most part, a lot of people aren't. They're on city water. So get yourself a dechlorinator. You have to add it every time you add water. All right. That's the first common mistake that a lot of beginner fish keepers don't know. Now, also, there's a bunch of different items to quick start your aquarium which API makes an awesome solution for jump starting your aquarium. A lot of new fish keepers in the hobby don't realize you have to add some beneficial bacteria to the aquarium for it to get established. Now, don't get it twisted. If you're gonna do quick start, it says here on the bottle, allows instant addition of fish. You can't just go add 10 fish when you add this, okay? So my recommendation, if you wanna add fish is, I would say, dose the aquarium with this quick start API and then add maybe one fish. Let's just use a 10 gallon aquarium as an example. Dose this every single day, follow the instructions on the back, pretty easy to use, and I am a big believer on quick start. Now just remember, your new aquarium needs beneficial bacteria for your fish to survive. And I would say after a month of dosing it with quick start, like probably every day, it should be established, and then you can go ahead and I would add one more fish on a 10 gallon tank maybe once a month. So you can actually stretch it out and make it a family thing. Come on down to PetSmart, buy a fish, but be patient, okay? That's the key word with beginner fish keepers is be patient. Even us veteran fish keepers get impatient. I've done it numerous times. Now, if you wanna learn more about the nitrogen cycle, just type in nitrogen cycle on YouTube and there's so many videos. I'm not gonna get into the details of the nitrogen cycle, but Corey over at Aquarium Co-op has a really good video and he explains it in layman's terms to where you can understand. He uses this thing with M&Ms, it's pretty good. Uh, because I love M&M's too. Whew, a little hot. Hey, can we turn the jacuzzi down a little? And I'll leave that link to that video down in the description below. Go check it out, Ohana. You're absolutely gonna love it. Pretty much does it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a little something. This one goes out to all my beginner fish keepers out there. This was actually a really fun video. I like this video. Comment down below, Ohana, if you guys enjoyed this video. This is something totally different that I've never done before on my channel. But not only that though, if you guys haven't subscribed and you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. This is the perfect opportunity to hit that subscribe button. Next to that subscribe button is a little bell. Click that bell, turn it on. It's just gonna notify you when I upload a new video and then you're part of the ohana and the best thing about it is it's absolutely free so with that being said i will see you guys on the next video much love and aloha <laughs>